the winning, winning, winning blueprint, blueprint presents. presents. <laughs> Welcome, you are in the lab room. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. It's Thursday, which means it's football day, the last Thursday night tilt on NFL Network for the season. So enjoy this one. And looking at the matchup, it's really not that bad of a game. You look at it from afar, you say, hey, there's one team struggling trying to make it to the postseason and the other team just playing for pride, trying to save the job of their head coach. It's probably not going to be that good of a game, but you'd be wrong if that's your assessment of this matchup between the Cincinnati Bengals, who are traveling to play the Philadelphia Eagles. If that, in fact, is your assessment of this game, you're wrong. This is a Philadelphia Eagles team that they've gotten progressively better over the last month or so, each and every game they've played. Now, you take a look at when Nicholas Foles first entered the lineup, when he was thrust into action, when Vic went down against the Cowboys. You know, he threw one touchdown pass in that game, but he looked bad. He threw two interceptions. One was returned for a touchdown in that game. They struggled. The following week, the Redskins tattooed them. He looked bad in that game. Threw a pair of interceptions in that game as well. Did not look good. Looked like a quarterback that was rattled, that was really playing for the first time in the National Football League, which really was the case. Hadn't really gotten that many snaps. That Redskin game was his first start as an NFL quarterback. He got better the next week against Carolina on Monday Night Football. They still lost Bryce Brown. Fumbled the football away. Maybe they have a chance to win that game if Bryce Brown doesn't put it on the ground twice. Then he follows that up with an excellent performance against the Dallas Cowboys. And then you can start to see the light bulb come on for Nick Foles. The game was starting to slow down. Things weren't as hard as they were when he first started. It really started to come to him. And even though they lost that game, again, Bryce Brown put the football on the ground. They lose that game. You can see the wheels were starting to turn into motion for Nicholas Foles to start getting it as an NFL quarterback and maybe... It put the Eagles in a position to win a game here down the stretch. You know, they were riding an eight-game losing streak, and so he was desperately trying to help them break that. So they go to Tampa Bay, and you're expecting them to lose. Tampa Bay, a desperate team at this point in the season, looking to try to make a push to get into the postseason. Having lost two straight, the Buccaneers couldn't afford to lose at home to a Philadelphia Eagles team that had lost eight in a row. So you're thinking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would handle business. At one point, they hold a 21-10 lead. Nicholas Foles, unflappable, takes his team down the field, gets a touchdown, don't get the two-point conversion. They find a way to get the football back, drive it the length of the field with two seconds left. He throws a game-winning touchdown, a walk-off touchdown, as the Eagles beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 23-21 last week. And so the Eagles feel good about themselves right now. The first time they've been able to win in over two months. So they feel great. And this Cincinnati Bengals team, stark contrast to the Eagles last week. They were able to come from behind and win, were the Eagles. The Cincinnati Bengals, however, they blew a lead. They were on the opposite end of the spectrum. They found a way to lose a game that they seemingly had in hand probably for the whole game. I mean, you, if you watch that game, the Cowboys tied it up at 10. From that point on, they dominated the game defensively. Now, you could argue they dominated offensively, but they didn't have anything to show for it. They kept settling for field goals. And when you have a team down, like the Cincinnati Bengals did a week ago against the Cowboys, when you have a team down, you're at home, you have all the momentum in your favor, No moment, the other team doesn't have any offensive flow, they can't get anything going, you're doing what you want to do to them on the offensive side of the football, you have to score points. You have them down, you got to kick them. You got to step on their throats. They did not do that. They left the door open for the Cowboys. They allowed the Cowboys to slide their foot into that door. They tried to shut it, but the Cowboys had their foot in the door. They were able to put their hand in, wedge it open, and they came right in. They were able to score 10 unanswered points to finish out that game, kick the game with a field goal as time expired, and beat the Cincinnati Bengals 20-10. to That was a game the Bengals had in hand and should have won. But, again, when you're a team that struggles to beat quality opponents like the Cincinnati Bengals have done this season, 
You lose games that you shouldn't lose, especially at home. This late in the season, you were winners of four in a row. You should not have lost that game a week ago. Now you've made your track to make the postseason that much harder because you would have been in the playoffs had you won that game. If the playoffs started today and you would have won that football game, you would be in the playoffs right now as the sixth seed in the AFC. Instead, you're still on the outside looking in, and now you can still control your own destiny. All you have to do is win out because you still play the Steelers. You still play the Ravens. You still have an opportunity to control your own destiny and get into the postseason. However, that's a tall task to ask of a team that struggles with the likes of the Steelers, with the likes of the Pittsburgh Steelers in that division. It's been a while since they've been able to beat either the Ravens or the Steelers in that division. And so from that perspective, you have to say that it's going to be tough sledding for this Cincinnati Bengals team to get into the postseason. But if you're the Bengals, you can't worry about anything else. You got the Philadelphia Eagles in front of you. Tunnel vision is what you need right now. You need not focus on anything but the Philadelphia Eagles. That's all you should see. Philadelphia Eagles and how can I win this game, get to eight wins on the season, and put myself in the playoffs as of Thursday. Of course, that will be pending a Pittsburgh Steelers game on Sunday against the Dallas Cowboys. But you need not worry about anyone else. That's your problem right now. You worried too much about other teams. You didn't get it done on Sunday. Handled your own business. Had you handled your own business against the Cowboys on Sunday, you would be in the playoffs right now. So that's what you need to worry about. Concerning yourself with business matters of the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cincinnati Bengals alone. You do that, I don't see why you won't beat this Philadelphia Eagles team. This is still not a good Philadelphia Eagles team. Don't mistake the Eagles for a team that's any good. They won a game last week. Yes, they did on the road against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team that many thought they would lose to, but they got it done. But they're still a bad football team. They're 4-9 and nine for a reason. Because they're not a good football team. And if you put pressure on Nicholas Foles, which I expect you fully to do in this game, Geno Atkins is a grown man. Not many interior linemen want to see Geno Atkins lined up in front of them. Because normally it ends with Geno Atkins destroying you, getting in the backfield and causing havoc, whether it's getting to your quarterback or stopping your running back in the backfield for a tackle for loss. So Geno Atkins is a man down there. He's a man beast down there in the trenches. You're going to get to see Geno Atkins. I've been saying this for about four, maybe five weeks straight now that you need to check out Geno Atkins. If you haven't been watching him, he's an assassin. He's been a silent assassin because he plays in Cincinnati. Not many people know what's going on out in Cincinnati, but you're going to see it firsthand tonight. Geno Atkins is a man beast down there in the trenches. He's going to cause problems. That whole defensive line for the Cincinnati Bengals can cause problems, and it's, it all starts with Geno Atkins. You look at Michael Johnson, Carlos Dunlap, you know, Robert Gathers. They have guys that can make a difference. Omata Pecco, they have guys on that defensive line that can get it done. This Cincinnati Bengals front seven, I think, is really going to pose problems for this Philadelphia Eagles offensive line, which has been a patchwork line all season long. And Nicholas Foles has been doing a great job of getting the ball out of his hand of late. But he hasn't had to deal with the pressure that he's going to see in this game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers did a excellent job a week ago of stopping Bryce Brown. There was no running game for the Eagles a week ago. Think they might be getting Shady McCoy back in this game. Not quite sure. But I believe he practiced. I think he passed his baseline test finally for that concussion. And so he might be able to suit up and go. But even if he's not, it's imperative that the Cincinnati Bengals stop the run. Make the Eagles one-dimensional in this game. Make Nicholas Foles beat you. Make the Eagles turn to Nick Foles and say, hey, go get it done like they had to do a week ago against Tampa Bay. If you do that, you have them playing right into your hands if you're Cincinnati because that's your strength. Getting after the quarterback is what the Cincinnati Bengals do best. I thought they did an absolutely fabulous job of that last week against Tony Romo and the Dallas Cowboys. Problem was they got no help from the offense whatsoever. The offense let them down last week. A.J. Green had his worst game as a pro last week. He's looking to bounce back and have a big game on national television and really help this team down the stretch try and get back to the postseason for the second consecutive season. And it's going to take a lot of work from this offense because last week I really think they dropped the ball. If they have a better performance out of A.J. Green, they have a better performance 
out of Ben Jarvis Green Ellison. I really think that they didn't give him the football enough last week. I think he only had 12 carries a week ago. You can't have that if you're the Cincinnati Bengals this week. You've got to feed Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. He's a guy that over the last couple of games, your four-game winning streak, he was a big, integral part of your winning streak. He was getting it done. I mean, he had some of his better games in that four-game losing streak. You think about the game against the – he had some of his better games in that four-game winning streak. You think about the game against the Raiders. That was his best game of the season. You don't need to stop feeding him now. This is the time of the year when running the football becomes your best friend. It's getting cold. In some instances, it's raining, it's wet, it's snowing outside, depending on where you are geographically. You need to be able to run the football. And so the Cincinnati Bengals shouldn't have games now down the stretch where they're only allowing Ben Jarvis Green Ellis to run the football 12 times. That's a mistake. If you're the Cincinnati Bengals, you have to run the football. But A.J. Green, he will snap out of it. That's not A.J. Green. The, the A.J. Green you saw last week was not the A.J. Green that we've seen for the first year and two-thirds of his career thus far in the National Football League. I don't expect to see him dropping passes, dropping touchdowns, dropping third down conversions like he did a week ago against the Cowboys. I think he's going to come out, be dominant. Everyone else has had their way with Nami Asawa and DRC and the rest of this Eagles secondary. I expect Andy Dalton to take shots to A.J. Green early, open it up, and have some success against this Eagles secondary. Move the football, and this time they can't do what they did a week ago, which was settle for field goals. They got to get in the end zone. A.J. Green dropped the touchdown last week. You got to find a way to get in the end zone. Ben Jarvis Green Ellis has a nose for the end zone. When you get down there, don't be afraid to feed him the football. Score points, this Eagles team, they're not a team that's explosive as in years past where you knew the Eagles could put up 27 in the blink of an eye. That's not what they do. You know, They had their highest output of the season at just you know two, three weeks ago against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday Night Football in a losing effort, but they're not a team that's going to light the scoreboard up. So if you're the Cincinnati Bengals, get to 24. Get to 27 points. Get to 29. You do that, you'll win this football game. You allow this game to be played in the teens, uh, low 20s, 21, 17, 19. You allow this game to be somewhere in that general vicinity. You'll be in a dogfight because this Eagles team can score 20 points, can score 21, can score 17. So you need to find your way to 24, to 27, 29, 30. Threaten these Eagles by putting up points on the board and make them have to chase you down. If you do that, make Nicholas Foles have to beat you with his arm. You can put pressure on him, force him to turn the football over. I see the Cincinnati Bengals being able to win this game, and that's exactly what I think they'll do. They'll have a bounce-back game. They know the importance of this game. They can't afford to lose any more games. They lose this game, and for all intents and purposes, their season is over with. Because, look, let's be frank. This Cincinnati Bengals team does not beat the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Baltimore Ravens often. So to ask them to do that in back-to-back -back weeks would be blasphemy. So I'm not going to even allow them to lose this game and say, hey, they can still win out and get to nine wins because that's not going to happen. I'm a realist, and I know the Cincinnati Bengals aren't going to go on the road to Pittsburgh and come home and then beat the Ravens. They're not going to do that. So they got to have this one. They got to have this one. They should have won last week. They blew that opportunity. Now this is a must-win. Here on, from here on out, it's a must win. But it starts tonight on Thursday Night Football against the Philadelphia Eagles. I think they'll get the win. Get to 8-6 and six on the season. Drop the Eagles to 4-10. and 10. And the Eagles will have a lot to say about this. The key for them is turn Andy Dalton over. You know, stop the run. Make Andy Dalton beat you. And much like the Cincinnati Bengals want to do with Nicholas Foles and the Eagles running game. Stop the running game. Make the quarterback beat you. Same thing for the Eagles. Make Andy Dalton beat you. Don't allow A.J. Green to be the one that does it either. You know, if Jermaine Gresham or Marvin Jones or, or someone else wants to get you, by all means, have at it. But don't allow A.J. Green to be the one that eats you up in that secondary. Make someone else beat you. And make Andy Dalton make good decisions and good throws. He can make mistakes. He's prone to it. Every game you get one or two questionable throws and decisions from Andy Dalton. He makes those questionable decisions. You got to make him pay. If you're the Eagles, you get opportunities to score touchdowns, got to score touchdowns. Limit your mistakes. Limit the penalties. Limit the turnovers. Force turnovers on the defensive side of football. When you get opportunities, take advantage of them. You got a shot in this game. But I see 
the Cincinnati Bengals playing with a sense of urgency that they didn't have last week. I didn't feel the sense of urgency in the second half against the Cowboys. I thought they put it on cruise control, allowed that game to slip away from them, instead of putting their foot on the throats of the Dallas Cowboys. I see them doing that this week, though, against the Philadelphia Eagles. They know they have an Eagles team that's not very good, and that if they jump on them early and make a statement, they can have their way with this Eagles team. Now, I don't see them doing that, but I do see them getting a win. 24 to 17 in this game over the Philadelphia Eagles. Cincinnati Bengals go to 8 and 6 on the season. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Eagles drop to 4 and 10 on the season. So that's a touchdown. Go ahead, throw it up. Want to tackle on this quick extra point. Now, Commissioner Roger Goodell, one of the extra set of eyes, you know, looking over the bounty case because there's been a lot of grumblings about him being the jury, the judge, and the executioner. There was not a good appeals process because guess who they were appealing to? The guy that said you were in the wrong in the first place. You're not going to get an overturn from the guy that said you were wrong in the first place. So, yeah, that's not fair. So he said, okay, you think I'm being unjust. I'll allow ex-commissioner Paul Tagliabu to take a look at it and see what he finds. And if he says that, yeah, you guys are guilty, then everything's upheld. Well, Paul Tagliabu finally finished, you know, combing over this case and he made a ruling. And guess what? I don't care. I don't care anything about Bounty Gate anymore. I don't care about it. I don't care what he found. I don't care what his ruling is. Who cares? Maybe the media cares. I don't care. As a fan, we don't care. If you're a Saints fan, maybe you care. Maybe you care. But the damage has already been done. It's irreparable. The Saints stink this year. It's already done. So whatever ruling you have, it doesn't matter. Who cares? The reason it was important in the offseason is because what it could mean for the Saints moving forward in this season. And look what happened. The Saints stunk this year. And that was a large part of the reason why. No head coach, missing some players, a lot of turmoil, a lot of things swirling around your team. Yeah, it happened. You guys suffered because of what Roger Goodell brought down on you. And some of it you brought down on yourself. But again, I don't care at this point. It's like steroids in baseball. I don't care. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk about something that we do care about. Recently. The NFL had their winter meetings in Dallas, and uh, one of the topics on the table was the potential expanding of the playoffs. Now, that piques everyone's interest. As a fan, you can't help. They talk about playoffs, that, that sets off a radar. You start listening a little closer. Playoffs, playoffs, playoffs. Yeah, playoffs. So, they're talking about expanding the playoffs, potentially four more teams in the postseason. So, rounding it out at eight, there'll be no more bye weeks for any team in the postseason. There'll be eight from each conference, giving you a total of 16. A lot of the pundits were saying the only way they would go for that is if they expanded the league, you know, adding two more franchises, someone in LA and someone somewhere else, maybe in London or somewhere like that. Who wants to go to London to play a game? Who, who made that up? Who said that was a good idea? If you're not in the United States, I don't think it's a good idea. It's okay to play one game a year there. Try having eight games over there a season. Try having teams have to travel over there every single week. Or having a team having to go over there every other week. That's not a good idea. I know you want to expand the game and make it global like the NBA and all that. I get it. I just don't think that's a good move, though. That's not a good look. Because what you're having to probably do is either... Take those two teams and put them on bye weeks the next week. That's a lot of traveling. I mean, you're taking a team out of their element and you're putting them in a precarious situation because everyone that goes over there can't be on a bye week the next week. At least I don't think. Maybe the schedulers can find a way to make that work. But down the stretch, what happens when they play a home game in week 15? There's no bye weeks in week 15, week 16, week 14. So what are you going to do down the stretch? That's just not a good look. But anyway, I digress. Let's get back on the subject. Subject matter here is expanding the playoffs. I was listening to someone and they were saying, hey, as a fan, you're probably excited about that. If they do that, that's a fan's dream. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Pump your brakes. Speak for yourself. Don't speak for me. I don't think that's a great idea. I'll tell you why. In the NFL, it's unique. 
It's not like college basketball. It's not like college football. Not like the NBA. Not like baseball. Not like hockey. None of that. This is a unique sport. You get one shot. And much like college basketball, you get one shot. And you don't play your best football in that one game, you can lose. But also in the NFL, the regular season does a great job, unlike a lot of other sports, of weeding out bad teams. In the NBA, you could be 11 games under 500 and still get in the postseason. That's garbage. How often do you see a 8 seed beat a 1 seed? Doesn't happen too often in the NBA. Because just about anybody can get in as long as your conference stinks. You can get in. In the NFL, your division can stink and you can get in. If you win your division and it stinks, so be it. Your division just stinks. You got in because you're a 7-9 Seattle Seahawks team and the rest of your division stinks. We've seen that happen before. And guess what that 7-9 Seahawks team did? They won a game. But that's a division. We're talking about wild cards here. You know, these extra teams that come in, they're not going to be divisional winners. They're going to be wild cards. And so if you tell me the nine and seven Jets from this season, because the Jets could run the table and go nine and seven, deserve to be in the playoffs, I would look at you as if you haven't watched football a day in your life because this is a bad New York Jets football team. They absolutely stink. They're terrible. And the only reason they have a chance to win nine games because the last five games are the Cardinals, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Tennessee Titans, Buffalo Bills, San Diego Chargers. You play those five teams in a row, you have a chance to win five in a row, you have a chance to get to nine wins when you were four and seven on the season. So they don't need to go anywhere. They stink. They're a terrible football team. But if you expand the playoffs, put two more teams in, in each conference, make it a total of 16 teams, now teams like the Jets who would have missed the postseason because they're not good enough to get in, now they get in. Now you let stragglers who shouldn't have made it to the postseason, you let them in now. You water down the quality of our postseason. Now you're making a team that won 12, 13, 14 games in the regular season. They earned the right to get a week off. They earned the right to make it to the next round without having to play a game. They earned that right. And now you're making them have to go out and play against a 9-7, a 8-8, a 7-9 football team that stinks but made it in because you expanded the playoffs? No. I don't need that. I don't need you to make the playoffs longer. I don't need you to make the playoffs have extra games just because it, it's fun and it, it makes the game better. And No, it doesn't make it better. You're watering down the product in the playoffs. I like it just the way it is. And yeah, you could call me a purist or you could call me an old hag, and you call me a guy that is a traditionalist and I just want to keep it the way it is. That's not what I am. I'm just someone that likes a good product. It's okay to make me stomach bad football during the regular season. You can't help that. You know, everyone has to play games. So I get it. It's some bad football being played in the regular season. You put the Arizona Cardinals against the Jets in the regular season, you don't have a choice. You got to watch that game. It's on the slate. So you have to deal with it. You got to take a 7-6 to six ball game and stomach it and hope that you don't regurgitate it. It's okay. But in the postseason, I don't need to see that same Jets team that lost 49-14 to 14 on Thanksgiving. I don't need to see that same Jets team. I don't need to see them. I don't need them. I don't need to see the same Jets team that at home was plastered on Thanksgiving and plastered at home by the Miami Dolphins. Destroyed. At home. I don't need to see that same team. They're not good. I know what they are. They're a bad football team with issues at the quarterback position. I don't need them in the playoffs. I don't need to see that in my postseason. I don't need my postseason contaminated with that type of garbage. I want the best six teams you got moving forward in each conference. And if one of the best six teams is a 7-9 and nine team that won a division, so be it. But I don't need stragglers trying to get in on the back end, on a wild card. Birth that was given to you because you wanted to expand the postseason. Don't need it. And I don't care if one of those teams that missed the postseason is my team. You aren't one of the best six teams. You didn't do enough work during the regular season to get in. That's a you problem. You didn't do enough to get in. No one needs to 
expand the playoffs. No one needs to stretch the rules out so you can get in. You need to do more during the regular season to be one of the best six teams, to be one of the first six teams to cross the finish line in your conference to get into the postseason. You want to play extra football, have a chance to win a Lombardi trophy, do enough work during the regular season. This isn't the NC2A tournament where, you know, you cry and you complain and you get them to expand it to 68 teams. If you're not one of the best 64 teams in the country, you don't need to be playing extra basketball for the right to win a national championship. That's just how I feel and that's how I feel about the NFL. If you're not one of the best six teams, you don't need to go. You know, Having that first round bye is a luxury. That's something that you earn. You win 12 games, you win 13 games, you win 14 games. You deserve a first round bye. You deserve to lick your wounds. It's been a long journey to get to that point for you to win your division. Win home field advantage throughout if you win the number one seed. Win a first round bye if you get the first or the second seed. You did a lot of work during the regular season. You deserve to allow players to rest that ankle, that bum ankle, to heal that aching back, to rest that sore foot, that sore elbow, and be ready for that playoff game the next week. And be at home. Not travel or be at home in that first week of the postseason. Play a bad team that got in. Dispose of them, but you didn't get to rest anybody. Now you got to go and play that next week again. Instead of resting, you earned the right. You went 13-3. You won 13 games. You deserve. You earned the right to get a bye. Let's not change that. Let's not change that to let stragglers who didn't do enough during the regular season get in. I think it's fine the way it is. I think the overtime rules are fine the way they are. Kickoffs are fine the way they are. I was all in favor of them allowing teams to get the ball after a field goal. You know, it sucks sometimes that, hey, you know, back in the day you kicked it off. They went down the field. They got a field goal. They beat you. It's an offense and defensive game. You can't stop someone on defense from getting a field goal. Maybe you don't need to win the game. But I don't have a problem with the new overtime rules. They're fine by me. You know, if you score a touchdown, then you deserve to lose. You give up a safety, you deserve to lose. But if you get a first possession field goal, then the other team gets a chance to match a field goal or beat you. But I don't want you to change my kickoffs. I like the kickoffs the way they are. You know, guys sign up for this game. They know what's at stake. Kickoffs are a part of the game. They're a fun part of the game. They're a huge part of the game. Let's not take that out of the game, and let's not change these uh, playoff rules. Let's not change them. Let's not change the criteria for the playoffs. You need to be one of the best six teams, not one of the best seven, not one of the best eight, one of the best six. And if you can't do that, then you don't need to get into the postseason. And that's going to do it for this episode of In the Lab Room. I thank you for joining me. As always, many ways to contact or view the show. I'm on Facebook. Like the page. Every episode I've ever done on the Facebook page, check it out. Also, on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Would love to hear from you. The Facebook page is In the Lab Room. The Twitter page is at In the Lab Room. That's the Twitter handle. I'm on YouTube. Like the page. Louis T. Subscribe to it. Every single video I've ever done on YouTube. Check it out. And also, in the lab room at gmail.com is the inbox. Drop something in there. I'll respond. So I thank you for joining me again on this program. Check the Thursday night football out tonight. I think it's going to be a pretty good football game, and it's the last one of the season. So there is no more Thursday night football after this. So check this one out because you'll be missing it once it's gone, and it's gone after this week. So check it out. I think it's going to be a solid game. I think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to get it done. And I need to get off on the right foot. I had a terrible week last week in the pick em weekly. Man, was it bad. I went 8-8 eight and eight last week. Can't afford another week like that again. So need to get off on the right foot, get this thing started correctly, and see where we go from there. So hopefully I get off on the left foot. Not the right foot, the left foot. The left foot is the good foot. And that's what I'm looking to get off on this week. I want to see you back here tomorrow. Same time. Same place. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your week. And and as always, enjoy the football tonight. We'll come back. We'll talk about it tomorrow as well as all the rest of the games that will occur in week 15. And take care. See you tomorrow.